welcome back to Window Shop with Car and Driver. This is our seventh episode, and we've been really having a lot of fun with it, so we're just going to keep going. Um, so today's topic, we decided to sort of honor the state of Georgia. Georgia last week announced that they were going to let parents um, just decide whether or not their kids can have a driver's license. So we've written a lot about teen driving since they made that announcement on Thursday, and we decided we would take a look at like what would be the best car you get for a teenager for less than $10,000. So we all went through. Some of us went for safety. Some of us went for cool. Um, I don't know. We're really interested to hear what everybody else's choices are. We're going to start with uh, Drew Dorian. Drew, walk us through what you found. All right, so I kind of think that there's like two um, kind of schools of thought here when you're picking out a car for your teen. So uh, the first one is that I found that I thought would be good is this 2006 Jeep Wrangler. All right. It's, uh, a cloth top, it's bright red, so your teen can live out there share Horowitz fantasy from Clueless. If they look as a <laughs> are, you worried, are you worried about rollovers? You know, it doesn't have a roll bar. I think it's uh, fine. Yeah, <laughs> does I mean, it have a roll bar or it does? Yeah. It's just, or, you know, susceptible to rolling over if you hit something. Yeah. This one also would give you the opportunity to teach your teen something that every adult driver needs to know, and that's how to drive stick shift because this one is actually a manual, five-speed manual. Uh, or no, it's a six-speed, I'm sorry. Um, and it, it's not fast. This is only like a four-cylinder car, so they can't really get into too much trouble. Um, plus, it's cool. What teen wouldn't want to roll around in a bright red Wrangler? I mean, that is cool. You know what I like about it, too, is that you really, if you want to get more than two people in that car, you need to really be committed. Like your yeah. friends need to really want to climb into the back of it. So yeah. you're not going to have too many kids rolling around being distracting and being idiots. Exactly. Which engine is it in that one? Is that the six or the four banger? This is the four cylinder 2.4 liter. I tried to look back through our testing to see if I could find anywhere where we tested one. I'm sure we did. I just can't find it. No, I don't think they ever put them in the press fleet because they were so slow, Drew. That's perfect, for a teenager. That's, perfect for a first, that's perfect for a first time driver. Yeah, yeah you don't want anything faster. Four wheel drive. This one is uh, for sale in Illinois. So I kind of like this one myself. Any Illinois shoppers out there should, should jump on it. The other school of thought, I think, for shopping for a teen is to try to find something that has a lot of today's like modern um, like driver assistance features. Yeah. Obviously, those things are really new, so that would require buying like a very new car, which might be out of the ten thousand dollar budget that we set. But luck luckily, I found there's a few of these actually. Twenty nineteen Hyundai Elantra SELs. Um, the SEL trimline was the one that had all the driver assistance stuff as standard. So this car is under the ten thousand dollar limit. Polish little sedan. It only has thirty six thousand miles on it. So this is something that your team could take with them like on into adulthood through college whatever has automated emergency braking late departure warning blind spot you know monitoring and i think even rear cross traffic alert so this would be an option for somebody who's concerned about having their kid drive something that kind of has a lot of the modern safety stuff yeah there's uh i guess like different schools of thoughts with your teenagers like do you want them to have too much do you want them to have all the bells and whi whistles with the safety stuff or do you want them to be you know completely running free of that so they learn how to pay attention on their own i feel like you could go either way i'm not sure for 2019 the elantra was actually a top safety pick plus for i uh, from ihs too so you know this had really good crash test ratings and I'm sure is going to hold up a lot better in a crash test than a 2006 Jeep Wrangler. <laughs> I mean, that's not saying much. <laughs> you think this is a rental car since it has so many miles on it. Well, if you check the Carfax, it says one owner, so I'm not. I don't think it is. Yeah, let's let's take a look. I'm I'm pretty sure this is a rental car. Um, yeah, no accident. Would be. Rental vehicle, yeah, rental uh, car. Yeah, that's not ideal. Well. You know, I don't know. Like sometimes I agree with that, but sometimes I don't because if it's in a rental fleet, you have to assume that it's getting, you know, preventative maintenance on time and on schedule. So who knows? It's kind of 
up to you on whether or not you want to take the risk. It's weird they mark it as one owner, even though it's a rental car, because it definitely had more than one driver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a little misleading. Exactly correct. Yeah. Oh. All right, send me the link to that Wrangler SE. I want to check that out for myself. I know it's a little <laughs> underpowered, but I want to take a look at that one. Yeah, okay, I will. All right. Well, thank you, Drew. We're going to move now to Joey Caparella. Joey, what did you find? Thank you for joining us from prison again. Can you please tell the warden that uh, we really appreciate you getting the free time for this? Yeah, and my ransom notes in the works. <laughs> um, so I picked a very different, I went down a very different path. Um, I think that for a teen driver, the most important thing is that they're engaged in the act of driving. And I picked a car that I think is very fun to drive and has a manual transmission. And that is a Mazda 2. So I picked oh, actually course. several different Mazda 2s. Uh, um, they've had many different names and badges over the years. So this is the first generation Mazda 2 that came to the US. Um, it's a small hatchback. It has 106 horsepower, I think. Um, it's not fast, but it's very fun to drive. And I always loved uh, whipping around town in these. It's a five-speed manual transmission. Just Super low really, miles too. Yeah, this one has low miles for the age, especially. The green is, I don't know if you'd call it cool, but it's, you know, <laughs> makes a statement at the very least. I've only seen those Mazda 2s in that color. It's yep. kind of the iconic color for them. But I guess that's a good thing for a teen, though, because it makes them extra visible to other drivers. <laughs> True, I like yeah. that. Exactly. Um, I so, yeah, this is, was like, you know, fully a Mazda. It was their smallest car in the U.S., um, it wasn't ever that popular. It wasn't nearly as popular as a Honda Fit, but I always thought it was more fun to drive. They're um, fairly fuel efficient too. Which is yeah, cool. they get good mileage. It's very practical. You know, it's not as spacious as a Honda Fit, but it's still pretty practical. Um, here's a few others. Um, these are all the same hatchback body style. Was and then, was this that, really it's weird, Joey, that not a lot of people drove these very far. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not a road trip car. <laughs> It's not a road trip car. That's really, were, were these related to Ford Fiesta at all? I think there was some parts sharing between the two, um, but it was in the U.S. before the Fiesta ever came here. I think. Okay. Um, so then I started looking at the second generation Mazda 2, which was never actually a Mazda in the U.S. It was originally a Scion, Scion IA, but this was actually built by Mazda. It's it's you know thoroughly a Mazda 2 with just different badges. Um, this one is a little more modern. It has more safety features. It's still available with a manual transmission. Yeah, um, generation newer. I like it. Yeah, that. and it, I, I think that like this car kind of exemplifies this idea that it's more fun to drive a slow car fast than it is to drive a fast car slow. Yeah. So, you know, obviously you don't want your teenager going fast all the time and you're not going to go very fast with only 106 horsepower. <laughs> but I still think that it shows that driving can be fun and like, to me, if you're interested in driving, you're gonna be paying attention to the road more so than, you know, if you're driving a boring car with an automatic transmission, it's easier to be on your phone and not yeah. be fully engaged in what you're doing. So yeah. I like this idea of a manual fun car that's very simple. Yeah, manual definitely kills your ability to be on your phone while driving. Yeah, yeah no texting. So here's a couple that were the Scion version and then Later, it became a, a Toyota Yaris. Oh, no, sorry, that's the, I need to get this bar out of the way. I see it. It's over to the left, right? There you go. So here's a Yaris. So originally, it was the Yaris IA, which was sort of a weird rebadge situation. Um, and then this one, I was actually really confused about this one because it's a 2016 Yaris. But in 2016, technically the only version of this car that was in the U.S. was the Scion. So I looked at the Carfax. It turns out it was from Puerto Rico, where <laughs> I guess they sold it as the Yaris. So anyway, that, that was just a weird history with that one specifically. Uh, but this one is a Yaris IA. So it's after Scion was killed right. and it became a Toyota. But it's yeah, the didn't, same car. If you car, want your kid to have an orphan brand, you could get him the later Toyota. Yeah. But I mean, Scions generally have just about as good resale as Toyotas do. So, totally. you know, it doesn't really make a difference, I don't think. Well, cool. That's like surprising number of choices off the same car. 
<laughs> yeah. All right. Now we're moving to Austin Irwin. This is Austin's first time joining us on Window hey. Shop with us. So thanks for being here, Austin. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so for my idea, I kind of, um, when I approached this, I was thinking more like, first off, wow, like $10,000 is a lot of money, especially for a high schooler. Like that's yeah. pretty awesome if uh, their parents are throwing down 10 grand for their first car. Um, as far as my choices, I tried to pick a variety of different things. Uh, everything's from Facebook Marketplace. I've been using Facebook Marketplace for like stereo and, and uh, other car part stuff. Seems yeah, to be a little more. Craigslist. What's that? You like it better than Craigslist? Yeah, it just seems like there's just more stuff out there. And I kind of like that I can just click on somebody's profile and see, you know, human. what this. I didn't think about that. Yeah, you it looks like. You can verify. <laughs> yeah. And there's a, a kind of like a rating system on Facebook Marketplace, but. Um, Does this also I, mean that the, these cars are local to you? It can, but you can also search. So everything I searched was out of Michigan. Because if I, <laughs> the next car I buy, because, you know, we're here in Michigan, um, in Ann Arbor. I'm not buying a car, like a used car in Michigan ever again. That's good. Why not? Because uh, the they're so rusty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gotta go. Yeah, I was working on my stuff, and rust just makes things impossible. That's true. Expensive. Uh, my first pick was this, uh, which I just see now is actually sold a week ago. Oh, um, 2009 Toyota Tacoma. It is the um, the four door, so you have a little bit more space. But also, this is a good choice for somebody who's going to be graduating soon, and they need to move to college. So you have a nice bed in the back. Um, this generation has a much better safety rating than the previous gen oh, by a lot. Um, They've been improving it over time. Especially in the, uh, yeah, especially in the uh, driver's footwell for whatever reason. That was a big issue with the Yeah, these have great resale gen. value too. You'd probably not yeah. lose money. Even if you added 100,000 miles, you could still probably find a buyer at five grand for it. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't believe this was 9,200 and 130,000 miles. Yeah, so yeah, nothing for a Tacoma. Yeah, that's way low. Probably um, why it's sold so quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no yeah. doubt. Uh, is that a V6 or is that the this four? Is the, the four O. Yep. So it's not great on gas. Yeah, uh, but, but you get quick. a little bit more power. Quick yeah, for sure. Um, that's a good truck. Yeah, and it was in good condition. Where North is interior? It? New York is really going to be that much better than Michigan, Austin. East Aurora. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> 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 I mean, it looks, I mean, you know, 2009, it hasn't been out for too long to be like completely rotted, but it looks yeah. clean. Yeah. yeah. It's in pretty good shape. Somebody clearly took care of it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, what's, next? what's your second final? One, second one is this 2012 Honda cross tour. Oh my goodness. So this is like the <laughs> wagon version of the Accord. Show more pictures. I yeah, wish yeah. it was a wagon. It's more like a deformed SUV. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was a little bit. So, like you know, the Honda Pilot. Um, it was uh, as far as like storage space, like cubic feet wise. It was just a little bit under the Pilot. Will you scroll through the picture so we can see it? So it's been debadged, or the badge fell off at some point, or the badge got stolen. Yeah, or the badge was stolen. Is Very high profile? valuable badge. You got to see the profile of this thing. I don't know if they and have a profile. You can see there's. There's stickers. There's like a tape. There's tape on the windshield. Yeah, this windshield's been replaced. This is yeah. a sketchy ad. Yeah, this is a little sketchy, but. Steering wheel cover. Mm. 71,000 miles, $8,000. Uh, this is the four banger. There. It's southern. It's in Georgia, so that's. You won't see yeah. it for us. You have a ton of cargo room for your, um, for your kid who's moving to college. Yep. I want, I think after this is over, you should write these folks an email and tell them just to pull the freaking car out and take some real pictures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. These, these car ads. Like, this shot's a great yeah. shot. <laughs> that <laughs> sunroof <laughs> cover. What is that? That's the uh, retractable roof or whatever. That's a little hole, though. It looks like, burnt, like a cigarette burn hole or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it could be. Or like a burnt, melted M&M on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Um, yeah, no. you know, this had low miles. It has the the four cylinder, so not as fast. It's a little bit better as far as fuel economy goes. Eight grand. Yeah, they didn't make these for very long. 
They only made these a few years. Yeah, there's a reason. It's ugly. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like they sort of like jumped the gun though, because if you think about it now, like if there was a crossover version of an Accord, it would make total sense. But at the time, it was like, what is this thing? Absolutely. All right, walk us through your third choice. Third choice is a 2011 two door Golf TDI. I love him. 87,000 miles. So you're kind of like, the big issue with these is the timing belt maintenance, which I think is around 92 to 100,000 miles. So something to keep in mind if you did pick this one up, you could be looking at uh, a grand or two as far as the maintenance charge for getting That seems like a lot of money for a nine year old car. The TDIs are really in high demand. They have been uh, forever. Yeah. Is he, have, is he a man? Great, my, yep, great mileage. It's a six-speed manual. Cloth and well, they listed it so. as automatic incorrectly, but it is a manual. Yep. Yeah. And I guess we can assume it's had the, the emissions fix. Didn't they all have to get that? Uh, uh, <laughs> <maybe>. Someone <laughs> has not been driving it correctly. <laughs> Someone's been taking good care of it. Wow. 30 miles, 5.7 miles to the gallon. There it is. Yeah, so not a bad car. I do like that it's a two door, so it makes getting everybody in and out kind of tougher for kids. I right. mean, I was like, even now. Less, they've got to be. What's well, that? Are the gas powered ones a lot less money? They've got to be. Yeah, and this one's, you can see this little like KBB fair market range. This is kind of high. Off the chart. Uh, it's, it's I think really the TDIs like, are, yeah, like they're just, the prices are all over the map because yeah. the TDIs are they're more rare and people really like the diesel. Yeah, and it, I mean, it's possible that this one has some service done that others don't, or um, like the condition-wise, it's just in really great shape. And this yeah, one is in got matching tires. Yeah, nice. I might be the only person of the group of us who actually lives with teenagers currently, and I'd be worried about a diesel with uh, new drivers. I just don't know that like they're necessarily paying enough attention to make sure that they're putting the right fuel in. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for your teenagers, then get them the gas-powered one. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta say, though, I mean, this design has really held up because this still looks like a very handsome car for being a 2011. And yeah. the two-door Golfs, I always think they look the best. Yeah, and these have surprisingly good safety ratings, too. I was, it was uh, a B average on IHS. Cool. Got cool. seven so. wheels. Yeah, it's a looker. Yeah. So it's the GTI. All right. Thank you, Austin. Now we're moving to yeah. Tony Kroga. Tony, please uh, walk us through your choices. There you go. All right. Um, well, for me, I'm kind of with Joey. I, I would want a manual transmission, and I would want my kid to definitely know how to drive. So, <laughs> oh, oh my man. God. Tony. Also, also, I want a two seater or limited number of seats, both for procreation reasons. <laughs> I don't want them procreating in the car. And because it limits my liability as a parent because they can't carry around other people's kids. Well, that's, that second part is important. But, you know, I'm, I feel like you already don't like your children. You don't have them yet. But, like, I feel like this is saying, like, I don't really care if you sure. had out there. And What do you mean? This car might have ABS. <laughs> <laughs> it also, this car also introduced the wind deflector to the world. There well, was, and you know, if you bought your kid that car, they would definitely like you. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's a stick, so they can't text in it. They can't carry a lot of people. They won't be the go-to person for driving places. So, you know, Especially okay, at I, night. I, recognize, I recognize maybe it's not the safest car. So my next choice is a little safer, but it's the same brief. It's mm. a Mercedes-Benz uh, SLK 280. The SLK 350 was actually on our 10 best list. In Those Oklahoma. were fast, but the 280 was not fast. Well, 280 was not. Okay. And I don't even think it's like that four-cylinder Jeep. I don't even think they put one in the press fleet because they were so slow. <laughs> is it a manual? This is a manual, yes. Yeah, wow, so, those are so rare. Just manual. a manual Mercedes. I love the black and tan. Yeah, it's a cool color combo. It's got a hard top, you know, retractable hard top. Um, you know, it's a Mercedes-Benz, so parts might be expensive, which would be a bummer. If it it's starts like cool, like SLR type nose. Yep. Yeah. Beautiful. I actually really like this. Yeah, me too. Again, two seats, so they can't carry people around. I don't think it would be very comfortable to uh, have sex in. So, 
<laughs> now, well, anyway, what euphemism you're going to come up with? <laughs> if you think these are too small, I, I, I'm kind of with, uh, you know, you want your car to be more of a battering ram for your teenager. Oh, no. And manual F-150 is the way to go. Oh, wow. This is for the kid you like. The other one's for the kid you want to like you. No, I, 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 I don't know. It's whatever they like, too. I mean, I, I would give them some say in it. I mean, if they're car enthusiasts and they want something sporty, I think the other two would be a good fit. But if they're not that into cars and they just want a battering ram, then, you know, this is a battering ram. The kids in shop class would be so jealous if you pulled up in this thing. And then to Austin's point, I can, they can move stuff. They can move yeah. stuff. And they can go into home. Wow, stuff. But yeah, uh, this one has the, the bench seat. So, I mean, at most they can get two of their friends in. And Those like they, vinyl seats and crank windows. That must be a super base model. Oh, yeah, it's an XL. It has so many miles. Only 99,000 miles, though. It's a V6, too, so it's not going to be very quick. Yeah. Tony, I do have to point out, though, that you are making a big deal about a car that your kid can't have sex in, but this literally has something called a bed. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, Drew. Fair enough. They can, yeah, they'll be making love under the stars. <laughs> it's a long bed, too, so if your kid is tall, then there's... Yeah, it's a big bed. Um, and then I'm with Austin, but I'm taking away the rear seats. So I, I found a two seat or a, a two door Tacoma instead of the four door Tacoma like Austin found. 99,000 miles. Again, manual transmission. Same idea. Limit my liability. Not a fast car. Really, none they of drive. them are that fast. So, you know, they're not going to get themselves into too much trouble. I think they're also all rear wheel drive. So I'd be concerned about drifting. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> Mike is going to go to advanced driver training immediately. So. <laughs> they will probably be doing that. So those are my choices. All right. I guess it's my turn now. Um, okay. So like, unlike my colleagues, um, I did not really go for fun. Um, my belief for teen driving. Well, first of all, my belief for a teen, uh, the best car for a teenager is no car for a teenager. Like, I really think that teenagers should be borrowing a car, a family car. Um, because I think once you get that ownership and you think it's your own car, then it becomes a totally different thing. So, um, but yeah, I, never, I was never allowed to have my own car as a teenager and I think it was the right decision. Yeah. I just saw a picture of myself at 16 and I couldn't believe that I looked like a child and I couldn't believe that somebody gave me a car to drive. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I grew up. I didn't, I didn't get a car until I was like 20. I had to borrow my parents' car. And like for us with our kids, um, we have a car that they can use and it generally kind of becomes their de facto car, but it's still not their car. Like my husband and I go in and we take the car often and we're like, you know, we make it unavailable sometimes. And you know, it, it's the message is sent home that it is uh, not their car. Is that, that the Volt? Said, what's that? That's the Chevy Volt? That is the Volt. Yes. That is the shared car is my 2011 Volt. That said, sorry. Um, when I, when we do look for cars, I usually, this is a really trustworthy source. It's the IIHS list and they go through and they, um, they just, they list like what you should pay for it. And it's, they give you tons and tons of options. I'm kind of scrolling through this pretty fast, but my right. general belief that off, off this list, what you should be picking is something that's kind of slow and kind of ugly. Um, cause novice drivers are not they're just not as good as they think they are. So but why, why ugly though? Um, <laughs> because I think what you guys are going for, like what you guys are going for is like something that's like exciting to drive. And like, I really believe like you need to have the basics down before you get into the exciting, right? So like once you get the basics down, once like things become automatic for drivers, you know, it takes like something like three to five years of consistent driving for a lot of those behaviors just to become automatic. And like the things that just kind of like, you know, get dumped into your brain and you don't have to think about it anymore. Like that's a long time of driving. So like, then like once you get to that point, then you can get into something exciting. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Right. My child will be racing go-karts. <laughs> that's actually, well, I mean, that's not a terrible point. So anyway, <laughs> I went with this, the 2014 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. Two-wheel drive, um, like you know, this is not exactly not ugly, it's car. fine. It's not a bad looking car at all. Yeah. No. But I just should say, this is what we said about it in our review, in our, this is what our make model page says. <laughs> uh, let's get this out of the way immediately. Mitsubishi's Outlander Sport might be the worst vehicle in its class. <laughs> 
<laughs> Perfect. We don't mince words. How many stars did we give it? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Where is that? Oh, four. <laughs> four out of ten. Four? Yeah. Four out of ten. Four out of ten. Yeah. And yeah, so two out of five. We say it's not terribly well built, not enjoyable to drive, slow with the base engine, generally unimpressive in virtually every other way, which makes, in my mind, makes it perfect for <laughs> There we go. <laughs> well, our, clearly our review has affected the resale value too, probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this one is 2014 and it's $9,000. The thing about Mitsubishis too is that they're not very well built, like they rattle and squeak a little bit, but they're very reliable. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. The only thing that this, does that I don't love for a teenager is that it does fit at least four people comfortably and that's too many yokels in the car for me Agreed. Um, and it's not manual um, and I think the manual is definitely definitely something you guys got over me that I that I uh, there that was I, a Mitsubishi Outlander Sport available in a manual so you probably could find one if you search one, yeah. Yeah, you'd have to look. It's probably super has cheap, too. In the trunk. Can we get a trunk shot to see that big subwoofer that your kid's going to be blasting? Yeah. 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 There you go. Oh, wait. They're being the piece. Yeah, that's quite... That's quite... going to be rattling the license plate on the back. <laughs> Travis Scott. That's probably right. sock. Yeah, that's probably what came with it originally. I think so. I think you're right. And then my other pick is the uh, 2012 Volkswagen Rutan, which is essentially any of the Chrysler minivans. They could have an orgy in that thing. My uncle was shopping a long time ago and this, he had called me and said, hey, I'm looking at this Rutan. The salesperson told me it's inspired by the Chrysler Town and Country. And I said, don't buy that. It's a Chrysler Town and Country. Well, okay, so it's off-brand, right? It's an off-brand Chrysler Town & Country, so it's, it's, got, it's cheaper than the Town & Country's. Uh, what is this one coming in at? I can't see the price because of the box. Um, but anyway, it, uh, you are not going to feel sexy in this car. No one is going to be trying to drag race this car. No one is going to be, like, you know, doing wheelies in it. Or now that you can do wheelies, but nobody's going to be doing burnouts in this car. It is definitely a slow box of a car i'm not as big of a prude as tony though i really don't <laughs> i really don't care about the making out there's so many other things to worry about as a parent like okay. i just don't worry about that these sold so poorly i remember seeing them when i'd fly into detroit they were stacked up in a lot waiting to go to dealers just stacked up sitting for months and months and months they could not sell them no. when they came out i was actually a Volkswagen salesperson in Detroit at the time, and they were just horrible. <laughs> nailed, nailed to the showroom floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how much do they want for this? One? I don't know. Oh, but I can see the price. You can. Oh, actually, it doesn't list one. Uh, yeah, it did. Is it in the listing? It did at some point. I don't know. I guess I didn't click on it. All for price. Um. I guess I could go back. Maybe it lives, let's sit in the... Zero. Free. Zero dollars. Wow. Right, so there's another one here for $2,500. It's a 2009. So I don't think you're going past 10 grand. In this That's car. very affordable. <laughs> yeah. You know what they did, though? They, like, they, rip, they ripped off the town and country. They put Volkswagen you know, logos on it to, to create a van for Volkswagen. But they held back their one good feature... And that was the stow and go seats. Right. They don't have them on the, on the Rutan. Right. Yeah, you, that's a crisis. Well, it's only in the third row. It's the second row stow and go that it didn't have. Right, but the third right. row still goes. It's it. got slightly different chassis tuning that I think Chrysler, when they did the mid cycle refresh on their vans, they adopted some of the VW handling stuff. I'm fairly certain that Volkswagen was also charging more for this than the yeah. <laughs> I believe it. I believe that. Yeah. How many years did this even last? This. I think this was just a single gen, wasn't it? Or was it two? Single gen. Yeah, I think it lasted like maybe three or four years. All right. Well, let us move to the most important part. The uh, verdict part. Now we're going to go through and judge each other. Let's see. Uh, Drew, which one do you want us to, to judge? The Wrangler manual or the Elantra SEL? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I think Wrangler. I think Wrangler is the cooler option. So I'm thumbs up because of Clueless. 
Yeah. <laughs> what does she say? She says, I totally paused. <laughs> yeah, she takes the questionable driver's ed test. <laughs> I'm worried about rollover and my kids having a gasoline fight. <laughs> That's a great movie role for the Wrangler. Yeah, it's, I'd I skip think, that one. Oh, yeah, awesome. I'm going to vote up just, although I don't really think it should go for a teenager. This for me is like a, like a young 20s car. Sharon's voting up yeah. for herself right now. Okay, for myself, yeah, send me that link. Okay. All, right. <laughs> okay. All right, Joey, you've got the Mazda 2 or the uh, Scion? I'll put up the green one just because it, it's my yeah, really. Mazda 2, yeah. Jelly bean. Yeah, I'd give, like I'd give it a good I was going to give thumbs up to all of your choices, Joey. I liked them. <laughs> I would pick the green one for sure. Yeah. I like green too. I like that it's manual. I think that that is, and it looks like, you know, despite me not wanting to have a fun to drive car, it, just, it looks reasonably fun. Okay. Just fun enough. Just fun enough, exactly. Okay, Austin, you've got the Cross Tour, the Tacoma, or the Golf TDI. What, what are you going to put up for judging? Um, I don't know. Maybe the cross tour. Although I feel like everybody's going to vote yes on the cross tour. Oh, I'm hard. <laughs> <laughs> that act was really sketchy. Perfectly. Yeah, that's just part of the adventure. Maybe if you can find a better cross tour, I'll vote thumbs up. But that one yeah. particularly, I'll vote. Yeah, I know. Definitely it's gonna go with your kids if you check that one out. I like it, Austin. I like the idea of that one. Golf gets a thumbs up from me. I like the golf. A little pricey. All right, Tony, you've got the uh, RX-7, the SLK-280, and the Ford F-150. What are you putting up for? Uh, I'm going to go with the SLK. I okay. like that a lot more than <laughs> Yeah, I didn't like okay. that either. Just the Sorry. novelty of owning a manual Mercedes. Yeah, it's a safe, and it's safe because it's a Mercedes. Yeah. It's not safe at all. <laughs> it's so safe. If, you, if you park that in your driveway with a big red bow on it for your kid's 16th birthday, you'd be father of the year. Actually, I think I remember an episode of the MTV Sweet 16 show where the, the girl turning 16 got an SLK. There you go. Yeah, those people all hated their kids. Hated their kids. <laughs> they showered them with <laughs> episode of that show. to make up for it. <laughs> Tony, are you going to be like one of those dads who like hosts the beer parties because you're the cool Oh, no. I'm worried about liability. I don't, want even, <laughs> I, I don't want my kid to drive any other kids around. That's why I have a two-seater. All right, so and then I'm going to put up the uh, Outlander Sport because it was just a terrible car. That Very practical choice. I think it's, I think it's a good choice. It's a sideways one. Yeah. I can see your logic, but I can't get behind it. Okay. If, it did, if it didn't have the giant subwoofer, I'd, I'd vote no. <laughs> <laughs> Great logic. Let the kids play. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining me again for another uh, window to shop with us. Um, we'll have another episode coming up in the corner somewhere, one of these corners. There's a little information box, and you can judge our choices. Pick what you think we should, uh, which of ours you thought were the best. Um, and if you have any ideas for future window shop with us, please email us at editors at carandriver.com. All right. Thanks, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.